Hey guys, and welcome to Method's Court of Stars Alpha Dungeon Guide. I'm Chris Potter, and here with me as always is Zerps. Hey guys. Okay, so as we come into this dungeon, there's gonna be a lantern on this little side here. It's really important that you don't spam click it as a group, just do it one at a time, because if you're spam clicking it, it might bug out, and as it did for our Elemental Shaman and our DK. So just take it slow, click once each, wait for the other guy, and then click again. You're gonna sit across the little puddle here, and we're gonna get into the instance here, and Potter is gonna show you some some nice scenery here. And then we get to the staff instance here. We're gonna get thrown off the boat. And in the start here, it can look really confusing as of where you want to go. But in no honesty, there's really only one way you can go because the other ways are blocked off by invisible walls, which is lucky, else I thought we were gonna be stuck here for hours. So we're gonna make our way here to the left and we're gonna get into this first house here. So here we go. Here we pull the first mouth of the instance. This one has a frontal cone stun, the Quilling Strike. You don't want to stand that, and it has the fortification as well, which gives himself a buff, which can simply be purged or, yeah, dispelled. And then we go up the house here, and we come out on the other side. And here, there's going to be a lot of mobs. The first one you see is the sentry in the middle, which we almost forget, but luckily our DK was aware and he gripped it immediately before it reached the beacon. And then we have two big mobs here. They have two spells. One, which is a Suppress, it's a 4 second cast. Once the cast is finished, he's gonna channel onto the targeted player and silence him for the duration. The other spell they have is called Charge Smash. You literally do a smash in the ground and they will leave a puddle under them. Your tank simply just needs to move them out of it. As you see on the right side, there's a beacon and you want to disable as many beacons as possible. Why I want to do this is because when you get to the first boss, he's going to summon more ads depending on how many beacons are up. So, preferably you want to disarm all of them and just clear as much trash as possible to get to the beacons, obviously. And here we're going to disable the first beacon of the dungeon, simply a cast, and then we're going to continue our way here. We're going to pull this mob here, same as before, has to suppress and the uh, charge smash. Nothing really to worry about. And here, we're gonna pull this big mob with these mana worms. We didn't know, this was the first time we've done the dungeon, that once you kill these mana worms, they're all gonna explode and they're gonna do massive damage. So we're actually gonna wipe here. Here we get back, and I think we've learned our lesson. And instead of uh, going right here, we're deciding to pull the left side, just to be sure that we're not gonna need you for anything. As you can see here, Chris just hovered over the next beacon we're gonna take, and he marked the next sentry, so... We don't accidentally pull stuff that we don't want to. If you um, engage these sentries and they reach the beacon, they're going to signal to nearby enemies and they're going to come and they're going to fight you. And in most cases, it's going to cause you a wipe. So try to have an eye out for them and just kill them as far as possible. They don't have much health. Here we're going to pull the sentry. We, we're going to grip it, stun it, and just try and keep it control until we can actually kill it. And here we're gonna pull this mob on the right side here and these mana worms. These mana worms, once they die, they are gonna explode. So what you wanna do is to stun them, move out, and then make sure your range kill them. Our well, Mentor Shaman was a bit close here and he almost dies, but luckily he doesn't. So we keep on pulling, get this mob down, and then we're gonna be ready to, to click the next beacon here to disable. We pull up on the bridge and there's two blue tigers and when they jump to people they are going to give them a debuff which is dispellable but also does damage over time. So you don't want that to stack up too high. Just try and keep it a minimum. If people get two stacks you either should just dispel it. After that we move over the bridge here and on the side of the bridge there's going to be three beacons. You want to disable them and that means that you have to clear a lot of trash. In front of here, you can see the boss is patrolling. You want to try and avoid to pull it until you have disabled as many beacons as possible. 
As you can see here, there's a beacon on the left side, there's one on the right side, and there's one on the opposite side. So what we're going to do first is that we're going to go right here. And we're going to disable the right one first. Then we're going to go left, and I think we oversee the one on the opposite side until we actually pull the boss, so that's a bit too late. So we just go with the flow and we just kill that, that's going to spawn. Again, a lot of the similar mobs, the jumping guys, the one with the single target spells here. Just trying to see them. Here we're gonna pull what we think is the last uh, trash pack that we're gonna kill before the boss here. We didn't even see the beacon you can see on the left side. So we thought that this was the last beacon that we could actually deactivate. So we're gonna disable the last beacon and we're gonna pull the first boss. The first boss is called Patrol Captain Gerdo. And his abilities are quite simple, but if you don't know what they do, they can be quite deadly. This Resonant Slash is literally just a cone in front and behind him, which is a lot of damage if you stand in it, as well as stunning you. And this Arcane Lockdown, when he casts everyone's going to get 3 stacks of a debuff that does a lot of damage to you and reduces movement speed. The way to get rid of this is to spam your jump button basically, but each time you jump you're going to remove a step. Now you see here that the boss casted his Signal Beacon, and basically this is where the beacons from earlier come into play. For every one of those you had up, you're going to get extra trash. The mobs are quite annoying and they put a slow effect on people which can make it harder for them to dodge the things such as the resonant slash. So make sure to cleave them down really quick. And when the boss gets low, he's going to run over to the fountain in the middle there and he's going to drink a flask from the fountain. This is going to give him a buff that increases his damage by 30% and his haste by 30%. Now, you can see there is a considerable difference on the tank damage when he gets this. But as the boss is so low when he goes over there, it's really not a problem. It's not like I'm going to go out of mana or anything. So just spam to keep the tank up. Tank use defensives. And it's really easy. You can see our shaman doesn't jump off the stacks and he drops really low. And that's how dangerous the stacks are. Luckily the boss dies and he loses the debuff. So now at this point we're not really sure exactly where we're supposed to go. The map doesn't make it completely clear. Those stairs in front of us look like maybe you want to go up to them into a new bit of the dungeon. But it turns out actually you want to go up to the right here, so that's where we go. There are also some a pack on the left there with the mana worms from earlier. They explode when they die. They're very far to the left, so it's really easy to avoid them. No reason at all to pull them unless you were going for the beacon over there. We just skip them really easily. Again, we have the same kind of mob from earlier on that just does the ground effect. Does the suppress, make sure to keep interrupting that and to keep moving out of the ground effect he does. Really simple mob, interrupt and don't stand in the bad. Now the next part of the dungeon coming up is actually the most interesting. There's lots of different buffs around the room and depending on which buffs you get depends on which class you are, which race you are and which profession you had, so there's a lot to it. So here you have the four boss mobs, they're actually four mobs that combine to make this boss basically. And they have a very dangerous buff that increases their damage by 100% and their health by 100% for each nearby ally of them. So you don't want to fight all four bosses at once. We did try this once in a different group that I did earlier on in the day and we just got absolutely one shot. They just killed all of us in one hit. So what you need to do is you need to go around the room and clear out all the different trash packs like we're doing right here. Now these mobs can be quite dangerous, again you have the Bewitch and the Fire on the ground, but they also have an ability called Ice Storm, which does a lot of damage around them. You can see we take a lot of group damage here, and if you stand in the fire as well, you're probably going to die. Stuns are really good when they're casting the Ice Storm because they can't be interrupted, but the stun will interrupt the cast. Make sure you have stuns ready, and that your heal is ready to heal for it. Now you see this Enforcer here. When the Enforcers die, and there are only four Enforcers spread out across the room, they'll do this yelling emote. You can see the red yell. And what this does is cause one of the mobs to come to you. However, what actually happens here is I'm not sure if it bugs out or we accidentally kill two enslavers at once somehow, but we actually get two of the boss mobs at once, which is not what's supposed to happen and not what you want to happen. You see now the observer's gonna come as well. And here we go, we have two of them. And you see they have this buff right now, and this is really bad, okay? At this point we're we're pretty confident that we're going to wipe 
because them having a hundred percent increased damage makes abilities like that disintegration beam really deadly disintegration beam is basically a curse that the observer is going to do at a random player and just channel damage over to them over five seconds they hear it's going on our shaman again and it's just stacking up so high and there's nothing we can do he has a hundred percent damage buff it's just too much Devara mob is going to do this whirling blades which is just aoe around her it's really easy to avoid just move out get a debuff if you sanded it which will cause you to take even more damage but this disintegration beam is really doing a ton of damage with the 100% damage buff and you will also notice that the mobs are dying really really slowly because of the 100% health increase a reminder it shouldn't take you guys this long to kill them and it shouldn't be as hard for you guys if you pull them correctly or if the dungeon works correctly we're not really sure if we messed up or if we just bugged but you shouldn't be fighting two of them at once it really makes it really difficult Eventually we do get the Observer low, and he's going to die, and you'll notice as soon as the Observer dies that the other mob just dies a hell of a lot quicker, and it's just suddenly very, very easy. I think that maybe they're even buffing each other by more than 100%, because you notice now this mob just melts now that the Observers die. But as I was saying earlier, there are various buffs around the room, which you need to just right click on to take, and it's random which ones are going to be available for you to take but on top of that each buff has a requirement to take it there's literally a ton of buffs there's something like 30 different buffs and they all have different race requirements professional requirements and class requirements and it's actually i really like it. it's a really interesting mechanic the only thing i don't like about it is maybe for mythic plus dungeons are you going to be forced to take you know you need a goblin dk for this dungeon and as well as a pandaren mage and all this kind of thing just to be able to get the best time but we'll see what blizzard do about that in retrospect what we should have done is gone around and got all the buffs first that we could get with clearing the minimal amount of trash on the way to the buffs and then clearing all the rest of the trash while we have the powerful buffs anyway we carry on clearing the rounds to try and get one more of the boss mobs on their own but here we have the third of the four mobs of that boss and this is the fell guard type mob seem to only have one ability which was his shockwave and he only just spammed shockwave over and over again and it's just a directional shockwave as you could guess by the name and your tank just needs to move out of it or he's going to get stunned and take a lot of damage really really boring mob compared to the other two boss mobs we just had that had the interesting abilities it just shows if you pull them one at a time like you're supposed to just how easy they are So we finished off the trash, we got all the possible buffs that we could get in this dungeon, Chris is still eagerly looking for one, and we're gonna pull the final mob of this so-called boss, which is really just four trash mobs. He has a few abilities, the first one is the burning intensity, which is gonna give the boss himself a buff, which will do ticking damage around him, depending on how many stacks he has. And the second one is the Fernal Eruption. And that, as you can see, the small swells on the ground is going to do AoE the closer you are to them. So just try and avoid them as much as possible. His last ability is the Withering Soul. That will put a debuff on everyone and it will reduce your max health and give your movement reduction debuff. So you just want to try to keep those stacks at a minimum. They can be dispelled. So if you get too many stacks and your tank drops low, just make sure your healer is keeping an eye on him. Overall, this boss is pretty easy. It dies quite fast, as I said before. When you pull them one at a time, they really don't do much, so don't worry about it. And after finishing off this second boss in the instance, we are gonna go into probably the most interesting part of the dungeon. But what happens next is kinda random and really, really lucky. What you wanna do is you wanna talk to this guy here. And once you've talked to him, you're gonna get on a disguise. And what you wanna do here is to go inside and you need to find the intruder, the right one. So these guys with a speech bubble above their head, they're gonna give you small clues to what the intruder might look like. So what you wanna do is to speak to maybe six or eight to get the right intruder here. But our DK decided to go in and just randomly talk to one of them. And guess what? He got it in first try. Literally the luckiest thing ever, like he didn't even know what he was doing, he just went in and just talked to one. So yeah, I guess you can get lucky, but I think this is a really cool element to the dungeon. That you need to go and investigate who's the right one, speak to the right people and get enough information to pick out the right guy. 
So once you find the right guy, he's gonna lead you up and onto a balcony and he's gonna transform into something really ugly. Here he's gonna transform into a big demon. He has a carrion swarm, which is basically AoE. You really can't do anything about it, just AoE hit them up. And he has a cripple he's gonna cast on a random target, which is a slow effect. We actually thought that this was the boss, so we popped every single cooldown in the game, which, looking back at it, wasn't too smart. But, yet again, we cut it off fast. Last build he has is the Shadow Bolt Volley, which obviously he casts Shadow Bolt on everyone in the group, so you just want to try about that. After you've killed him, you want to pick up this key here to unlock the last room to the last boss here. Now that we have the key, we're going to walk back into the main hall where all the guests were and find our way over to the magistrates that we're here to kill. That's what this whole dungeon's been about. We're here on a secret mission, undercover, to kill the magistrates. When we get there, we find that the advisor and the Magistrix are talking and it turns out that we're not actually here to fight the Magistrix, we're going to fight the advisor instead because the Magistrix somehow, even though we're standing right next to him and I could very easily cast a spell at him if he was attackable, manages to escape. Unlucky. Yeah, it's just a standard case of RNG really. So the boss has a few abilities and it's actually a pretty interesting boss. It's not really difficult, but it is interesting. This piercing gale spell you just saw, he just does damage in a line in front of him and just don't stand there. And this slicing maelstrom ability is again just an AoE in a circle around him this time, don't stand there. His blade surge, he's going to pick a range target or a pet, it turns out because it went on the pet a few times. And he charges out to them, does damage and puts a debuff on them and leaves an image there. Now the interesting thing about this image is that it's going to replicate all the abilities he casts. You can see on the Slicing Maelstrom, he's also doing it. And when he's doing the Piercing Gale, the images are also doing it. And he just keeps spawning more and more images after each Blade Surge. So the ideal thing here would be is if we would all stand at the edges. You can see Roger's doing that. Me bangers could be a bit further out. Try and get all these images spawning at the far edges. Don't want the room too cool of them because if they're all doing the maelstrom and they're all doing the line in front of them, then it's going to be a lot of damage for you to avoid. There's not really much else to this boss. It seems pretty simple. This dungeon was a really interesting dungeon. I really like the look of it. I like the whole undercover thing at the end, and I really like the buffs as long as they tune it well for Mythic, so it's not forcing you to bring certain classes. Really good dungeon. This is all for now, guys. We hope you found the video useful. We hope you found it very interesting. As always, we appreciate feedback from you guys. Please like the video, subscribe, and we'll see you guys next time. Bye, guys. Bye, guys.